coming to you from the Athena Hotel in Bukalovi and tonight we'll be talking about bullying. What happens when your child is bullied in school? How do you deal with it as a parent? How do you help them go through this difficult period as a child? And uh, we have uh, in the studio somebody who is going to share what her child went through and how she's coping with it. And let's say it as it is. joining us. Um, tonight in the studio I have Jocelyn Nachimbole. You probably know her as uh, a journalist, news anchor with uh, Spark TV. Jocelyn, thank you so much for coming. I know this can't be easy to share. I know, but I have a feeling when I share it, maybe I am helping more and more parents out there who are watching us and even the kids themselves. Okay. Yeah. Well, we also have Dr. Paul Nyende, who is a psychologist at McCarran University, and we thought Dr. Nyende could help us dissect this and also help Jocelyn perhaps better understand how to handle this situation and whoever is also listening in. Jocelyn, do you want to tell us your story? Yeah, sure. Uh, I should say for the years I've been living, I had the worst Easter this year. This is uh, the day that I discovered my eight-year-old son was being bullied at school. I should say, I don't want to blame myself, but still, I would blame myself because, I mean, a lot happened, but I did not take time to observe. So what happens? Uh, I see my boy growing thin every day, and at some point it was okay because he's so active. So at some point we thought maybe he plays so much and he eats little. The fact that I'm not always home, I leave home at 5.30, I go back past 10. So I, I had a lot of excuses to his size. So the worst bit of it comes in at his performance. When I looked at his results, they were really not so good. But every time I kept on thinking, okay, maybe next time he'll do better. Maybe next time he'll do better. But meanwhile, I would even ask him what is happening. So he used to tell me, mommy, everything is okay. So what happens? As I started, I told you I had the, best, uh, the worst Easter. So on Easter day, I have a neighbor. The neighbor asked to go with my son to church. I was okay with it because the neighbor has uh, kids who are friends to my son. So the kids also asked me, can we have him? So I was like, okay, you guys, you can go. So they went to a different church. I also went to my church. So to this church, I thank God I said a yes to the request. Otherwise, until now, I wouldn't have known my son was being bullied at school. So they go to church and they were given small papers this church calls these papers Those are vitamins, the papers, the exactly. Okay. I made sure I carried them. <laughs> so these papers, at this church, they call them vitamins of faith. So every day as a parent, I'm supposed to give my son one vitamin of faith. What does it carry? It has some information that this child reads and then puts in action. So the first vitamin that was on a Sunday was asking my son to pray for the child that bullies him at school. We were having lunch. I saw him reading this, but I was busy, so I didn't really take... When, when he... Did you read it before you gave it to him? No, I didn't. He just told me when they came back, Mommy, we are given vitamins. Actually, I thought they were real vitamins, as in medicine. So, but I, at least... I was busy. I didn't really, really, really sit down with him and get to know the vitamins and everything. So... When he told me they got the vitamins, it was okay. I didn't think it was anything bad, so I waited to see the medicine. So later, after lunch, it was around, I think it was around 5 p.m., so he was seated, and he told me, Mommy, I think I need to take my vitamins. So I was like, no, you will when we are going to sleep. And then I said, wait a minute, let me have a look at the vitamins. So he brought me this. I read Vitamins of Faith and everything is supposed to take one each day. So we got the first vitamin and Josephine, it opened my eyes. The first vitamin was asking my child to pray for that friend who bullies him at school. So he didn't understand the word bullying and he asked me, Mommy, what is bullying? So I explained. I used a language that made him understand what this meant. And after explaining, I saw him crying. 
So when I saw him crying, I observed that I gave him time. Um, I saw him run into his room. So when he went to his room, I asked the nanny, what do you think is happening? So the nanny tells me, I don't know. Well, we let him be. So after about 10 minutes, Josephine Lorenzo was not coming out of his room. So I went to the room and asked him, hey, what's happening? He tells me, mom, it is okay. Meanwhile, he's still crying and the eyes are red. So I was like, you're telling me you're okay? But then you're crying. Mommy, I am not crying. So I said, remember, we have a deal in this house. We never keep secrets, yeah? He says, mommy, yes. So what is happening? What are you keeping away from me? You asked me bullying, and then I told you, and then I see you crying. So he tells me, mommy, it is okay. But as a parent, it can't be okay when you see your child crying. So I, I respected his time. I gave him time. I knew I would talk to him later. My best friend is my dad. So I hid myself and called daddy. I told him. My father hasn't told me until now. Maybe he was ever bullied. Because when I talked to him, his reaction was, he was so furious. He even told me he will go to school. My father, his grandfather, he said he would go to school. So at around 8 p.m., I told him we need to talk and he was like okay mommy so I called him I asked him what happened are you bullied at school he says mommy no so we pray every day when we are going to bed this time he did pray with us I kept noting the changes it is only one day Easter I kept observing all the changes so my son was praying Josephine, I had him pray for a friend so that that friend stops bullying him. This was on Easter? This was on Easter. You went to his room? Yes. So that was around, I think around 9.30 when he was praying. I felt bad. I went to my room and he didn't cry. I felt really bad. So what comes to my mind, I really wanted to go to school the following day, but of course that was Easter Monday, and I could not go there. But I wanted to go to school, meet this boy and talk to him, ask him why. That's what I felt at that particular moment. But then at the back of my mind, I was like, okay, they share the same class, this is P4. He's also a child. But then if he's a child, what is happening? So in the morning, I called him, and we sat. So I asked him, how old is this friend? He tells me, mommy, he's 11. So Lorenzo is eight, I knew. He's a child, but bigger than Lorenzo, the fact that he's 11. So I asked him what happens. He still tells me, mommy, I am okay. So because I wanted to know what really happens, I had to press harder, really pressing harder. What do I mean? I became tough because I needed to know what is going on. So I became tough. And he's like, okay, mommy, let me tell you. So he tells me it was heartbreaking as a parent. Whatever we used to give him, this other friend would take it away from him. So whenever he would tell him, I'll go and report you. So the friend would tell him, I'll kill you. You can imagine an 11 year telling an old dear boy that I'll kill you. And killing, it's bad news to him. So I asked him, how long have you been going through? And through this, we never keep secrets. What happened? Why did you keep quiet? So he tells me, because mommy, I do not want to die. Every day my son tells me he wants to be like his father. He wants to be strong like daddy. I want to have muscles like daddy. So one day I remember he asked me if there were gyms for children. So I told him, who do you want to fight? He tells me, no, mommy, I just want to be, I want to have muscles like daddy. At some point he cut off the conversation. I think he knew that I was going to dig more of what he was hiding from us. What did I do? So we call, I call the teacher, the head teacher of the school. I tell him, and then surprisingly, they were also watching because he wasn't performing so well like he used to do. And then he was slimming like every day.
But like I said at the beginning, I blame myself because I really didn't observe. I didn't have time. That's what I should say. I didn't have time for him and to watch all these changes. Maybe if I had, I would, I don't know, maybe I would come with a, up, up with a solution as soon as possible, but it wasn't. Did you go to the school? I, I didn't go. You may ask why. The reason is when I talk to the head teacher, the head teacher tells me uh, they were going to call the parent of that child. So they called the parent indeed and uh, they talked teacher parent meeting without me. So the parent promised, she, she actually asked for my number and said she's going to call me. But until now, honestly, she has never called. But I talked to my son. But Josephine, one thing I want you to know is when I talked to my son, I asked him why all this was going on and what the friend was telling him as he does all this. So I realized he used to tell them how rich they were. So they had the other money. Boy, exactly, the other boy. So they were rich, they had money, they had cars, they had food. He was a clever boy. And I also realized I think the boy was brown. He is brown in color. Why? Because at some point, my son asked me if he could be brown. And then I told him, Lorenzo, I am black and your dad is black, so why do you want to be brown? He cut the conversation. But now, after all that, I, I, I come to a conclusion that every conversation he brought in, he was trying to find a solution to the his situation he was going through. But then, because I didn't know what was going on, I used to make him cut off all that. You understand? Yeah. So when I asked about the car, he tells me about the cars, and I tell him, but Lorenzo, I have a car, and I drive you. What else do you want? They have a big house, but we have a house. You even have your own room. What else do you want? Mommy, this and that. So it was tough. It was really tough. I keep on blaming myself for apparently being busy and not watching what my son was going through. I told you about my dad. So my dad went to school. It is also another reason why I didn't go there myself. My dad went to school and they talked. They even called the boy. The boy apologized. And then my dad asked me to not to go because he went there. And then he says, let's see what happens. Have you seen any changes since Easter was April? Yeah, Easter was April and they have just started another term, but I think, yes, because I think about two weeks or one week he told me he loves his school. But then this is not an assurance, because even then when I said I should take you over from the school, he said I know. So I am, but it was tough. Like I told you, every time, I, I until now by the way, I just want to see this boy and maybe I can talk to him personally. But then my dad said, no, you don't have to go there. I went there and we talked. Let's just see what happens. Have you thought to call the mother of the boy? I, until now, like I told you, the mom went to school because she was called. And then she promised she's going to call me. She was given my number, but she hasn't called me. And I'm still waiting. Okay. I am still waiting. But it was so tough. I am telling you, my boy grew thin. Because I, I also remember all the times, maybe the times we used to wake him up. Maybe he, he was even scared of going to school, but then he really didn't want to tell us what was happening. Because he used not to eat all the eats that we used to pack for him. This other boy would take them and threatening him not to report because he will kill him, he will beat him, all those things. And then I remember when I was talking to him, he told me, Mommy, this friend of mine tells the f that boy told my son, I don't like you at all. So every time he used to tell me that thing, it, it, it really hurt me so much. Like a parent, I, I really felt bad, to be honest with you. And until now, because I can imagine what he used to go through, what his mind would tell him every time he would wake him up to go to school. You understand? <laughs> Well, I can't say I understand because I've not gone through the same situation, but I can understand as a mother how you would, you know, not even know what to do when your child is going through something like that. I could pass you a box of tissues, maybe just so we could take a short break. <laughs> That's so, so we can so ourselves and we'll be right back. Thank you for 
for staying with us. We are coming to you from the Athena Hotel in Bukolovi and we're talking about bullying tonight. Jocelyn just shared her story on what's been happening with us and thank you so much Jocelyn for sharing that. I, I think it's going to be very helpful to a lot of people who don't know how to start even having the conversation about bullying. Dr. Paul, you know, I, I could see from the corner of my eye the whole time you were like, Yes. <laughs> sure. uh, well, of course, uh, I would like to thank Justin for uh, sharing her experience and I'm sure very many parents are going through that um, experience. Bullying is uh, a common experience in schools, though it may not come out uh, a lot in the media, mm. uh, but uh, children go through bullying. Uh, it's aggressive behavior towards another person and it involves power. So much of what you have said, Justin, involves power imbalance. Somebody is a lot more powerful than the other and uh, sometimes it's because he's bigger, he's stronger, he's given the impression that he's richer, he's given the impression that he's more intelligent, uh, therefore he has it all that others or your son may not have. So usually also they may have uh, a behavioral problem, conduct disorder, probably because uh, they are not well supervised and they have not been well brought up at home. Uh, parents have not done their job very well. And uh, from what you have said, Justine, the parent has not bothered to follow up. So that is already an indication that uh, the parent is not taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. But also I think uh, school has not taken the right steps because we need to have all adults drawn into the discussion, all the stakeholders. You don't work with one and leave out the other. So mother needs to be involved because you are closer to the child and you are the one who found out the problems. So uh, ideally they all should have sat in the same room. Same room, parents, parents, both, the parents. Both parents should have been there. And I th it seems like uh, there was no moment where the parents on one side meet the parents on the other. I think each was dealt with independently, and then that will not solve this problem. We're not saying we're going to tear the boy down, we're saying we want to bring about change and help him begin to see others more positively. If nothing is done, uh, this may escalate into criminal behavior. So a parent who's letting the child continue with that kind of behavior is creating a bigger problem for a nation at large. Um, I think Children will often hide this information from you. I know how you feel, you feel guilty that you were not able to help, I, but I was, I was going to ask about that because she said it about five times yes. that I wasn't there and she thinks it's her fault. Uh, why do I say this, Josephine mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Nyende? It's because I was there, but I, I really didn't take time maybe to look at him losing weight. Maybe I would ask him and then put pressure on him like I did after the vitamins of faith, you see, because he, he had concealed even, even still, mm. after seeing him cry and then hearing him praying for the friend to stop bullying him, I asked and he said, mommy, everything is okay, mm. until I became tough. That's when he's like, okay, I am going to tell you. Yes, the issue was basically that you are not to blame because children will hide the symptoms deliberately and some children are better at wearing the mask mm -hmm. all seems to be well and more especially the boy the girl tends to be a lot more emotional and it is easier to see the symptoms in the girl boys have been trained to hide tender emotions like sadness depression they are likely to put a shield and for a long time he's put a shield and prevented you from getting over. So it's, he's got a skill somewhere, and that skill is preventing you to get to him. So that's where the issue was, and it was not your fault as such. One is because the child is being threatened. The very powerful individual issues threats. So telling your mom, and mom escalates the issue, mom is going to put me in danger. That is how the child interprets it rather than looking at it as mom will be there to fight for me. Mm -hmm. And yet you're actually there to fight for him, but he doesn't interpret it that way. So remember, he's still a child. He doesn't yet understand the social dynamics very well. Uh, I've seen scenarios where the abusive person in a home, like a houseboy, threatens a child that if you report, 
you will be dismissed from this home. Can a houseboy dismiss a child from the home? But the child will not see it that way. So unless they have been, uh, uh, they are more assertive. So your boy could be a lot more polite and uh, not as assertive to come and fight back. And uh, it's not your fault. Many parents have gone through this and it's later that they find the symptoms. I, I was thinking about when she said, she told him we have an open door policy at home, you have to tell me everything. And I'm just thinking that while you might be a teacher at home, they are teachers at school. I mean, children learn from every environment, mm -hmm. so maybe they're learning different things from, they're picking up different traits. So even the decision to how much do I tell my mother, mm -hmm. you know, could have been influenced by, you know, what, what's happening at school. But what are the telltale signs? You said it's easier to tell with girls than with boys. Yes. But how do I tell that my child maybe is being abused or bullied at school? Uh, one of those is uh, withdrawal. Usually the child becomes withdrawn and uh, the behavioral changes. Sometimes it can be uh, anger and frustration. They are frustrated all the time, they are angry all the time and they may start fights with others in the home um, because they are being bullied and frustrated at school. The other could be uh, they are crying all the time over nothing. Um, another scenario is the change in uh, eating habits, and I think you've seen the loss of weight, a change in appetite, and uh, a loss of weight. Something that is unexplainable. They've just lost appetite and uh, they're not eating. Uh, generally, suicidal ideation, which you may not see in some scenarios, the child begins to feel that uh, life is not worth living, and that is often associated with extreme depression. So children get depressed, children have emotional issues, uh, but sometimes it's a little difficult for adults to see them. One is that they have so much fear for us. Um, the adult, it's easier to see the warning signs in a fellow adult because uh, we drive ourselves and at some point we stop. The drive drops. It's harder for you to get out of bed, it's harder for you to go to work, maybe because your boss is bullying you and you're going to complain about your boss. But if it is a child, you drive the child. Get out of bed, prepare yourself. I don't want to hear that you're not going to school today. You must be in school. So eventually they learn to yield to the demands that you are presenting because you're looking at the bigger picture. You're looking at academic performance. You're looking at consistency. You are farm handed. Uh, so the symptoms are likely to be suppressed because of and, our and And, and you know, too. on a Friday evening, we have life in the house. Saturday, we have life. Then Sunday evening, around 5 p.m., 6 p.m. School is tomorrow. That's when we start losing Slowing life. Down Mommy, is. I am feeling bad. I am not doing this. Mommy, this. Mommy, that. Mommy, this. And I remember one time I was actually telling him, I think I need to put you on a bus and you go to the village. It looks like you don't want to go to school. In this house, you don't want to go to school. You can't stay with us. So now when I see it, I remember all those things, yeah. Josephine. Maybe he wanted to tell us, but he didn't know how to say it. Because oh. I am telling you, Friday, Saturday, we have life. Sunday evening, oh my God, you don't so, want to look yeah. at him. A reminder that he could tomorrow... even go to bed at six. He's finally told you, Jocelyn. I think that's the start. <laughs> so my, my question, Dr. Nyanda, is if, what happens when a child is not even showing those signs. I was reading an article online of a, a mother who, in trying to find out, she suspected. So she put a recorder in her child's school bag because her child was autistic and he couldn't really express himself and say, you know. And she had a, rec when he came back, she took it out and listened in and listened to the teachers bullying the boy, listened to the other students abusing him. What happens when you can't tell that there are signs? Or maybe if you're an extremely busy, couple or mother or father and you, you just generally miss the signs? I think uh, one of the things that's critical is to create an open avenue uh, and be very close and friendly to the child, be warm. Uh, I know we often take a traditional approach of uh, pushing them to do the things we want them to do, but at some point we create a barrier. There needs to be a very close relationship 
warm to the point that they can feel free to tell you everything or anything. Let them ask questions, do not rebuke them, allow them to say whatever silly thing they would like to say. In a way you create a stronger bond. Uh, but when we become more of the administrator, then the, there is a gap, a power gap, which is the same problem they are having at school. And therefore they will not be able to communicate. Uh, teachers at the same time have that problem. They are taking on an administrative role. They are pretty tough, they want things done in a particular way, they are disciplinarians, so they may not be very warm as well. So then they miss out on information. And also because of numbers that they have within the room, it might be very difficult for them to uh, see the warning signs in other children. Okay. Well, let's take another short break and we'll be right back. to you from the Athena Hotel in Bukolobi and we're speaking about bullying uh, today. What happens when your child is bullied? Um, how do you deal with it as a parent? Um, Dr. Nyendo, we, we've seen, so uh, your son is eight years old. Yes. Justin. I've heard stories about students, older students in schools committing suicide. How bad can it get? Yes, um, being bullied often leads to severe depression especially when you feel helpless and hopeless. Uh, the school administration may have no anti-bullying policy and uh, parents are not approachable. Um, other students are also um, promoting and supporting the bullying. You have nowhere to turn to. So adolescents also experience a lot of emotional problems. So a combination of uh, growing up into adolescence and uh, failure to find a social support network can actually lead to severe depression and suicidal ideation for the vulnerable ones could be one of the problems they face. That's very depressing to hear. Who is more likely, are there people who are more likely to be bullied? When Justin was describing and she said he was 11, um, he was, the, the bully was 11, so he's older, probably yeah. bigger. Yeah. yeah. Are there yeah. people whom they pick on more easily? Yes, of course, the smaller child could be a target because they cannot fight back and they are less threatening to the bully. Uh, then also if you are kind of withdrawn, if you don't have very close friends, because when you have friends and you fall within a group, uh, it's, it's harder to target you. Mm -hmm. But if you are isolated, uh, you are likely to be a target. Uh, the children who may have uh, learning disabilities or difficulties in terms of uh, intellectual ability, are also uh, targets. For example, a child also may have problems with stuttering or stammering. That could be a target. Um, basically, younger, uh, less assertive, with a low self-esteem, those are usually targets. Does it ever have an effect on them, the bully as well? Well, the bully, I think, uh, they tend to, uh, their behavior tends to be reinforced. If nobody does anything about it, they tend to increase and escalate their violence against others. So ultimately, because they are growing, uh, the bullying becomes engraved in their personality, and they may turn out to be antisocial individuals or turn out to be criminals later in life. Because much of the bullying sometimes borders criminal behavior. So you are a child, 11 years old, you are punching others, you're strangling others, you are already into assault, which is already criminal behavior. So at 11, you're already a criminal. How do you, how do you help Jocelyn and her husband? How do you help them to help their child? Uh, it is important that they get uh, closer to their child, uh, talk a lot more, uh, allow him to express his feelings, make it a point that you are my friend. Okay? And it is easier to get information from children when you become more of a play partner other than a parent. Uh, dad takes him out, dad plays with him and runs at the beach with him, hide and seek, and eventually you're all exhausted, sit down and say, now tell me, what are your problems? Uh, are you happy at school? <laughs> That's usually the best way um, to get the information out of them. Be a friend, a playmate, then it will all flow very easily. 
How do you help the parents of a bully? Parents, I think uh, therapy is essential. Uh, quite often it is necessary to seek for professional assistance if it has gone to that extent. If they are not bullies themselves? Um, well, if they are not bullies. Assumption is <laughs> it could come from somewhere. Well, in this, in, so. in this scenario, it's coming from school. I don't think the parents are doing the bullying themselves. Uh, they are simply trying to raise a child and uh, maybe being a little firm. Uh, but that might you know, create a bit of a gap between them and the child and the information may not come in through. But of course, uh, parents need to be friendly. Parents need to deal with their own emotional issues. Uh, professional counseling is uh, always recommended or a social support network from friends mm -hmm. who are knowledgeable and experienced in the area, they can be of great value. Okay. Justin, do you have a question? Uh, I, well, I sh the question is about the other parent, mm. Mm. my fellow parent, because until now, like the head teacher was telling me, yeah, we gave her your number and we expect she's going to call, but until mm. now, by the way, she hasn't called. So I was thinking, do I have to make the first move or I keep waiting or I go quiet, I let it go? I think uh, the administration has not handled this scenario very well. The administrator should be able to draw the two of you together and uh, not pass phone numbers to the other. The parent may be frightened to get to you because she expects an attack from you. So she's taken the number, but uh, it's difficult to call the parent of the victim. Uh, she may not necessarily be arrogant and negative, but I think it is better to be facilitated by the school admin. We have something to discuss, the other parent is here today, and you facilitate the discussion. But it tells us that schools are not well prepared to deal with this matter. How do you prepare schools to deal with this matter? Because it's happening a lot yeah. in schools. Mm -hmm. We always recommend uh, a school counsellor. Mm -hmm. They should establish a position of school counsellor in every school. Some schools have gone that far and that issues like that are referred to the counsellor who will draw the parents in and with their counselling skills they'll be able to resolve the matter. Administrators are not very competent in the area. Metron. Yeah, they are not competent. <laughs> okay, so I was going to ask, um, this is the physical setting of it's happening one child to the other in yeah. a school. It gets worse when it gets online. Yep. And now we're in the internet age. Sure. How do you deal with cyberbullying? For young people, because we know children as young as 10, 8 are online now. Yeah, very true. Yes, it's very difficult to control. It's, your child it's very true. Uh, mm. <laughs> you know why I'm saying that? Recently he was doing his homework and he tells me, Mommy, if you help me with your phone and it has some MBs, I can Google for the answers. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not supposed to Google for homework. I know, I know, I yes. know. He's supposed to ask you, so if you don't remember what you're studying, it becomes really another obvious. problem. It is very yeah. difficult to deal with cyberbullying because uh, we don't have much control. And uh, we are not controlling other children in their homes where parents are a little more relaxed about the technology. But it goes back to the school administration that you might, you, you need to talk to children, you need to open up avenues and uh, for discussion where they come and report and also you need to in you know, the bystander accountability is important those others who just watch the bullying and do nothing about it should also be accountable uh, but the schools have left that area untouched especially cyber bullying and it's increasing because of access today uh, in some schools, uh, private schools, uh, in, um, electronic gadgets are allowed, therefore rumours can spread much faster and uh, the child can be severely harm harmed by the spread of that kind of information. But again, it's about personal responsibility, uh, bringing out this idea openly at assembly, uh, teachers regularly talking about it and how bad it is, and also having very firm rules, an anti-bullying mm -hmm. policy. Investigations will be done and the punishments must be delivered. So the administration needs to be firm. Somebody must serve as an example and others will learn from that example. Justin, are you going to become an anti-bullying campaigner? What do you think? I don't want to see another parent breaking down because of something that we can control, by the way. Okay. Well, um, and as we close, Dr. Nyende, if what should Justin have done the minute she found out 
that my child was being bullied. So hearing him say that prayer and putting all the pieces together, what should have been her next steps? I think uh, what she did was right to talk to her father because her father is her good friend to <coughs> get that uh, support, uh, contact the administration. But I still also feel that Josephine should uh, meet the school administration face to face and uh, ask, request that uh, there is a meeting between you and the parents on the other side and have the discussion and resolve. I believe you would feel a lot better when you talk to the mother. Uh, she may not be responsible, directly responsible for the behavior. She is also struggling with uh, maybe work and probably missed some of the uh, symptoms as well that her son was a bully. And from there, you could strike a friendship and raise your children and become friends. Well, some of the things that, that he said to your son concerned me. For example, when he said, I'll kill you, yeah. right? Uh, is that something you, because you could argue you saw that on TV, right? Read it in a comic book? Or could there be violence at home that's also enabling the situation? That he's in this kind of environment, so for him, it is something he can transfer to school where he is, to the people who are younger than him that he has a hold over. I think uh, exposure to media violence is one of those factors that we uh, may point out. Uh, we are not very certain about the home environment, mm -hmm. but uh, family violence can also be a factor. So uh, there is a need to have that family resolve the matter, but also uh, support this boy and bring about a positive change in him because if he continues to do this and uh, no punishment is uh, taken no corrective action is taken it will escalate and you know something that i forgot to tell you these two are friends by the way at the start mm. they were friends so every time he could come home and you know you're buying something mm. for him he would say something for that friend yeah. But then my question until now is, were they, were they really, really friends, friends? or I had to well. forcefully, yeah. without my knowledge, buy, buy something yeah. for that friend? Probably he was uh, kind of manipulating you for the demands that he was facing. You must bring me food. Sure. And uh, he has to tell you there is a friend who needs something. So he's probably buying his safety. If you don't bring, you'll be punished. Buying his safety is a yeah. very heavy, very loaded so sentence. So much. <laughs> That's what is ha what's happening. Jocelyn, would you like to say something as we close? Or would you like your message uh, to be as we... Uh, we work, and we won't stop working. But I am asking the parents to take time off. Look at your children, listen to them. I mean, go through their bags. The school bags, maybe anything could be a sign. Anything. Look at them as you know, as they are eating. You know, for us when we were growing up, we would eat on the same table with our parents. I mean, that's how you tell maybe my child does not eat this, maybe she likes this, but because we are busy, we go back home late, we leave very early, we have this and that, and we are supposed to do them by the way. Sometimes and don't eat on the table anymore. That's also true. We we, we lose the most important um, moments of our children's lives. So if you really have the time, please take it and use it. Talk to them. Because I failed to talk to him. That's why he used to cut off the conversation. You spoke to him just I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I'm telling you, if I spoke to Lorenzo, I would know it earlier than this previous Easter here. I didn't. I didn't have time. All I had time was, did you eat yesterday? How was school? It was okay, period. I mean, I go to bed, I wake up in the morning. You get a That's summary it. version of the exactly. Day. Exactly. Right. Dr. Nende, would you um, like to say? I think uh, parents should educate themselves around these issues. Uh, bullying can lead to very many other problems. It can lead to drugs uh, because of the frustration as children get into adolescence. It can lead to truancy and avoiding to go to school and poor school grades and many other behavioral problems, physical problems as well. So educate ourselves, let's get to know what are the symptoms are, uh, close the gap between ourselves and the children, uh, recommend that schools should have uh, anti-bullying policies and they should enforce those 
regulations. The teachers need to be a lot more alert, and the media needs to talk more about this problem. We don't have good statistics in this country regarding matters of that nature, so research needs to be done. I was looking at the Western world, about 20% of the children in the United States experience bullying in school. Uh, Josephine, and by the way, uh, for the parents, I think what also we tell them matters. Because I remember until now, by the way, I still tell him, boys, they have to be strong. So I think this thing of telling him you have to be a strong boy, maybe it's the reason why he could not even share what he was going through because mommy tells me I have to be a strong boy. And you know, every time he would tell me he wants to have muscles like the dad. So I told him if you want to be strong like daddy, then you need to be stronger. And big boys don't cry. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Maybe that's why. Yeah. You want to say something? Yes, that? I think uh, we often encourage the boys to run away from tender emotions. <laughs> and uh, we encourage the girls to express their emotions. So it is easier for the girls to uh, express how they feel. For the boys, uh, you want to look cool-headed and calm on top, but deep within it is emotional time or And it goes through this adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, so encourage the boys to feel emotion and express emotion and talk about uh, their experiences. It right. is worthwhile. All right. Well, thank you both so much for joining us on the show, and we've been talking about bullying tonight. Um, watch your child. If you notice any changes, that's what we're saying, right? Yes. Pay attention to the changes. Pay attention to anything that looks like that's not what the child normally is like. It could be a sign that could help you figure out something that you'd otherwise have overlooked before it gets too late. Well, thank you for watching. That brings us to the end of our show for tonight. Um, coming up is NTV Weekend Edition.